All right, appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation. In this Spark Spotlight video, I'm going to be showing you how to load in your market conditions files to Spark, uh, what these different, different types of data sets mean, and also how to get instructions if you need help actually getting the file from your MLS. Okay, so first let's start with the basics. If you need any help at all with loading the data into Spark, meaning that you can't even get your file from your MLS correctly, you're getting an error message or whatever, click this yellow button. It will take you straight to a page. Here, I'll click it. It'll take you straight to a page with specific instructions for your MLS. I'm in the Arizona MLS, so it took me straight to my page. Complete instructions. There's a video showing me, how, showing you how to do it. There's also step-by-step -step instructions. Um, yours will look very different than this if you're not in my same MLS, but all you need to do, again, is let me get out of this, is click this yellow need help with file setup and it will take you to the instructions for your specific MLS. Okay, so next thing is what in the world is competing properties versus neighborhood properties versus alternative properties versus if you're doing a condo, which I'll change it over to a condo, what a condo project file. So essentially, we'll start with the top here, competing properties. These are the properties that you as the appraiser deem to be competing with your subject. So you go into your MLS, you do a search for just those properties you say are competing with your subject, and you export that, and that's the file that you load into Spark right here. Um, and that's also the file that Spark uses to calculate your 1004MC and also the numbers at the top of page 2 or page 3 if you're doing a condo. Now, um, you can perform any other analysis you want to on that. It doesn't just calculate the 1004MC. It'll let you do any other kind of market condition analysis you might want to do. Uh, okay, now the neighborhood file. What this is, is it's the f file you go into your MLS and get, just like with the competing file, but it's not just the properties that are competing with your subject. It's all the single family homes in your defined neighborhood boundaries as you define them on page one. Or if you're doing a condo, it'd be all the condos in your defined neighborhood boundaries. Not just those that are competing with your subject, but all of them. And you load that in here. Again, you can have Spark perform any kind of analysis you want to. If you want to see what your market's doing just for your neighborhood properties, you can look at that, or just your competing properties, or you can compare them against each other. However you want to do it, you're kind of in control of the whole analysis there. Um, and Spark also uses this file set, your, the, all the single family homes or all the condos, to determine your low, high, and predominant numbers that go in page one of your report uh, for the low, high, predominant price and age. And so I, I should clarify that you don't have to do these in this order. You go to your MLS and you do them in whatever you pre order you prefer. How I do it is I go into my MLS and I do my broad search first. So I go and get all the single family homes in my defined area. I export that. Then I narrow it down to just my competing properties and I export that and that's what's here. And then I narrow it down further to just the comps I want to load into my grid. And that's a different video, but then when you do that, you when you're on the grid side, you just upload those right here as your comparables that are going into your actual sales grid. Uh, go back over to the 1004MC here. And let's keep moving on. So the alternative properties. Now this is whatever the heck you want it to be. This can be anything you want. Some appraisers use the neighborhood file, the competing file, and then the alternative file will be somewhere in between. So it's not as big as all the single family homes in the area, but it's not as small as just the competing files. It's somewhere in between, and they use that to help them determine market trends, especially when they're in an area with very few competing properties. Um, some appraisers, I just talked to one last week where he uses this as an even bigger file than the neighborhood file. So not just everything in my neighborhood, but everything in my entire uh, municipality or in my entire zip code or however, it's up to you. You just use it however you want to. Other appraisers, especially I've talked to a lot of you in California that do this, you'll use this alternative file as a way to get um, to measure all the properties in a completely different competing area. So maybe all the properties south of the highway versus all your competing properties on north of the highway. And that kind of lets you figure out what maybe the price difference is between those two uh, locations. Condo project, pretty self-explanatory. It's all the properties in your condo project. And this is what Spark uses to calculate um, the lower portion of the 1004MC that's specific to your condo project. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, as far as how to upload them, it's, uh, it, it should be pretty straightforward, but what you do is you just click the plus button and Spark will ask you to tell it where that file is. So I clicked on competing, so I'm gonna upload my competing file, hit open, 
and it's going to load in that. Now, of course, that's a thousand properties. Yours is probably not going to be anywhere near that big, and that's okay. I just had a big file that went back 10 years because Spark allows me to do a 10-year analysis. Now, another way to do it is, here, let me show you this. I'm going to load up an actual window, and I'm going to go to the folder that has my files in it. It's right on my desktop. And so you can do that and just pick a bunch of files. So, and so if you're in an MLS, for example, where your MLS doesn't allow you to export more than, uh, like for example, in, in Utah, you guys can't export more than 200 listings at one time, and you need more than that, you can just come in here, select a bunch. By the way, if you're not familiar with it, to select multiple, you hold down the control key on your keyboard. So I'm holding down control, select all the ones I want, and then I can click and drag them right over to the plus button and load those in that way. Spark loads them all in. By the way, it will automatically remove duplicates. So if, you know, when you're going in and doing those multiple searches, for those of you in MLSs where you have to do multiple searches, um, for those of you who aren't aware, in some MLSs you're limited to a certain number of properties per export. So like I'm in an MLS where I'm fortunate enough to, I can just export as many files or as many listings as I want at one time. But some of you are in an area where you have, you're limited to like 200 or 500 at a time. So if you need more than that because you want to do, I don't know, a historic analysis or you have a really big neighborhood with a lot of properties in it, then um, you need more than 200 at a time or more than 500 at a time. You do a search um, to get maybe the first 100 or 200, then a search to get the next 200, and then another search to get the next 200, and then you just load them all in like this. It'll grab everything. If you accidentally um, grabbed the same MLS number in more than one of these files, then Spark will remove those duplicates. So you don't have to worry about having inaccurate data because you loaded the same listing in more than one time. Spark removes those by default. You can click here to upload more if you want to, or just hit go back, and you're back to this window. Um, you can add more by clicking the plus button. You can start over, remove everything by clicking the minus button here. Spark will say, are you sure you want to remove everything? You just hit yes, and Spark will remove all of that data. Now, um, if you wanted to, for example, just take, uh, let me go to my desktop, just take the one competing file. You can just click that and drag it over, and it'll process just that one file. And one other thing you can do here is you can actually click the plus button and from this window select multiple files if that's what you wanted to do. I'll hit open here, Spark will process those files, and I'm done. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how you upload files to Spark and that's the difference between these different types of data sets. Again, you can add more here, remove everything by clicking the minus sign, and lastly, I didn't show this yet, but you can click the magnifying glass to view all of the properties. Um, you can sort the data if you want to by just clicking the header. So if I want to sort by price per square foot, I can do that. Click it again to sort in the opposite direction. If there's an outlier, you can just right click it to remove it. I have a whole video on removing outliers and how to do it and how Spark calculates everything. Um, so watch that video if you want to. Um, and you can also, if you wanted to, um, I can actually click this and drag it around. So you can sort these columns if you wanted to as well. Lastly, you can filter them. So if, for example, I wanted to filter list price, I just click this little arrow, and I can filter by some certain condition. So I can filter by everything greater than a certain price, less than a certain price, between two prices. Um, I can look at all the prices and remove just a couple. Hit OK, it'll remove those and then I can resort them if I want to. Either way, you get the idea. There's, You can kind of sort and filter your data however you want to. And if you do want to watch that video on removing outliers, uh, which I would recommend doing when you have a chance, you click this gear icon, choose the help button, and then there's a list of a bunch of different videos here on a bunch of different topics. They're all between two and five minutes long, and the one about outliers is the one at the bottom here, viewing data and removing outliers. Okay, that should cover it. Thanks, everybody, for watching.